Okay, hello everybody. And you are listening to and watching Chantal High, Canada's dating coach. And we are live in studio today with Michelle Baxo with Power Love. Now, Michelle is an international love coach. She has a master's in counseling psychology. She is stationed in Toronto. And actually, Michelle and I talked about a year ago when she interviewed me. Mm -hmm. And now we are interviewing Michelle. Now, Michelle is all about feeling empowered, coming into your femininity and, and just really being okay with yourself and using that platform to then find the relationship for you. So I'm going to get Michelle to tell us a little bit more about mm -hmm. her business and about what she does for women. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Um, so yeah, I mean, there are so many already kick-ass women out there. And um, what I've noticed is there's a lot of really kick-ass, powerful women who are effective in the career, effective maybe taking on their health, taking on just themselves. But that's not translating in their love life. They're finding you know, men who just aren't a match for who they really are, can't necessarily handle, well, men or women really, right? But people that they're dating just aren't a match for who they've become, who they are and what they really want. And so I work with women to change all of that, to actually have their love life be a match for who they are as a powerful woman. I love that. Mm -hmm. Love that. This is, this is why Michelle and I get along so well because we are very much aligned in what it is that we teach and what we bring. And both of us have been there, done that and grown and evolved and oh, geez, yes. <laughs> taken. Yeah. Sorry. I laugh because I just think of my journey and it's, it's been a long road, but thank goodness it's been taken. So, yeah. I think the longest roads are the best ones though. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I say to people, I'm your Sherpa. And when you think about that word Sherpa, it's associated to Mount Everest. And mm. what is Mount Everest? The tallest peak in the world. Right. And what does a Sherpa do? It guides you. It, it yeah. not only guides you, but it, it carries a load, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And what I say is, and I'm going to say our instead of my, because I know Michelle is the same. Mm -hmm. What the load that we carry is the burden of knowledge. And we carry that for you so that all you need to do is put one foot in front of the other and just do the work that gets you to the top and we will be beside you the whole way through dishing out that knowledge so you don't have to carry that load mm -hmm. and the thing is it's to go through what we went through it took a lot of knowledge for us to undo the mistakes that we were doing right you don't have to make the same mistakes we did or if you're doing them you don't have to make them for as long as we did yeah. So that being said, Michelle, what is your journey? Um, so let's just see here. So I would say my journey started, uh, I had two long-term relationships where I almost married the man. And I wouldn't say I regret those relationships. They were definitely learning experiences for me, but both of them, I wasn't being, I discovered that I wasn't being true to myself in those relationships and I left those relationships. And, uh, and after that, I was like, okay, I really worked on myself What a lot of like us do, right? We think, okay, I'm not going to compromise myself anymore. I'm really going to work on who I am, be this whole version of me. So I dove into self-development thinking that one of the byproducts to that would be finding someone who was a match for this empowered woman that I'd become. And that just wasn't actually happening. So I was becoming empowered in all of these different areas, but not in my love life. In fact, my love life was getting worse. And so when I took on dating and I was, I was in action. I was, you know, I was meeting people in person. I was online dating, but it was, I was attracting unavailable men, emotionally unavailable men who were very honest actually, but not wanting to be in committed relationships. So you know, friends with benefits, you know, lovers. I, I actually even convinced mm -hmm. myself for a while that I wanted a lover. I was like, I'm a busy professional woman. You know, lover is all I have time for. But that's not really the truth. It was more that that's all I thought I could make work in my life because it seemed like the, those were my options. And um, it took 
it was six years actually of, of that, of stumbling through the, the dating world and just getting more and more frustrated and more and more resigned. I didn't think that I wanted children and it's fine for those who don't, but for me, that wasn't authentic. It was just that I didn't want to have children with someone that wasn't going to be a true partner in my life. So I stopped wanting it because I didn't think that was possible. And um, in my sea of personal development, one of my coaches had said to me, Michelle, it, imagine you're at the end of your life. What would you regret that you didn't accomplish or have in your life? Because we were looking at what's next for me. And for me, it was right there. I thought at the end of my life, I would regret not having that person, that person, that vision of love that I have only ever imagined and never experienced, that true partner and that family that would be a created family, not the status quo, but the, like the real creation of what, of, you know, what would fulfill me and what I view as would be like the life I really want. And then I was like, oh crap, that means I got to figure this out. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what I did. Actually, I took it upon myself because I love and I honor all of the personal development and the guidance I'd had so far, but none of it was impacting my love life. And so I took my professional experience. I took my, my, sorry, my personal training and decided to design something that would have powerful women like me who'd done the work on themselves, but to actually have the work that we're doing forward our love life. And I had no idea I was going to do it. I set a goal of four months. And, uh, and what I did actually was um, I video blogged the journey. I thought, you know, the best way to take this on is to not just have it be about myself, to have it be about serving others. And it was mortifying and it was <laughs> a lot of things, but um but that's actually, it was through that journey through my, I called it my single best idea at the same time because I thought I was punny. Um, but, uh, but now I call it power love. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's how, way, yeah. No, where sorry. can people find your video blog? Oh, they can't now. They, so it's only my video blog from that journey is now only accessible to my clients. It's one okay. of the exclusive things they have access to. So nice. yeah, yeah. But um, I'll tell you all about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was raw. It was, um, it was real. It was funny. It was sad. It was, you know, all of it, but it actually wasn't that long. It was quite a short journey when I really did the right inner work combined with the actions with the right you know with the right actions it was supposed to be four months and it was four weeks until until tommy asked me out i mm -hmm. said yes and very quickly we were just this match made in heaven and i could go into the whole the first mm -hmm. date was so romantic and uh, you know all of it but uh and now we you know we share a life we have a beautiful eight month daughter isabella and literally living my dream come true yes. and i'm really blessed because it wasn't going that way i was working hard on it before and it just kept it was like going in circles over so and over what did you do in those four weeks so there's a, a, a number of things actually but i would say one of the most important things that i did was I let people contribute to me. So I made a declaration, a public declaration, mm. mind you, because doing things publicly is really powerfully powerful because you squash the shame, the pride, the ego. It's like a big attack on the ego. Yeah. And um, so publicly I declared, I clearly don't know what I'm doing in this area and I am asking for your help. And, and I put it out to my people yeah. and said, give me your advice, give me your tips. And, uh, and I finally started listening and it wasn't, it wasn't about giving my power away because I think some people are asking for advice from other people and then just like swaying like a leaf in the wind. And so it wasn't like that. It wasn't as if I had to do what other people were saying, but I was really listening for what would cause a shift in me what was different so one example was and this is going to tie into our topic on on feminism mm -hmm. today but one example is i always had a really hard time men opening doors for me right it was just like or men paying for the bill like these were things that just like didn't just they didn't sit right for me and it was awkward like I, I was already at the door because, you know, someone's like letting you go ahead, but now you're supposed to like step aside or step back when they open the door. Like it was just, I didn't know I overthought it and I just never, 
it just didn't sit right with me. So one of the things I took on was receiving and, and letting, allowing people, giving people an opportunity to do things for me. So, um, and this sounds really small, but you know, if we look at, for instance, my first date with Tommy, at one point my shoe fell off. I was in a higher, a higher chair. We we're at a, on a patio and my shoe had fallen off. And my instinct obviously is, oh my gosh, I got to go down and grab my shoe. But he actually ran over to grab my shoe. And that made me very uncomfortable because <laughs> I don't usually receive things. And if I had gone with my instinct, then I would have reacted, tried to prevent him and probably would have kneed him in the face. And it would have been a really awkward uh, love killing scenario. Right. right? Yeah. But I didn't because I was taking on this particular, you know, this particular suggestion that someone had had for me. And I had, was taking myself on in terms of allowing and receiving and shifting the way I was normally doing it. I was challenging the way I normally do things. So instead I let this beautiful man pick up my shoe and put it on my foot. Even it like took everything in me <laughs> to not respond. But then it turned out to be this amazing romantic moment. And while I'm thinking to myself, this is like a freaking fairy tale, this woman across the patio literally yells out, oh my God, you're just like Cinderella. What I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. And this is not normally how my life would go. It wasn't like yeah. that, uh, you know? And and so, I mean, that's just an example, but it was lots of little things like that where it was a combination of letting people contribute to me and not going with the automatic, the default way I normally go about it and being in the exploration of that consistent with what I want. And what I wanted was a man who would treat me like a queen. I yes. wanted to be loved. I wanted to receive. I wanted to be open. I wanted to, someone who would allow me to, to, to give too. Mm -hmm. And there was all, oh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking <laughs> about it. I love it. And so, I mean, I could go on and on, but that gives mm -hmm. you a taste of it, yeah? Yeah. And I think that kind of dovetails really well into what we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. which is, you know, feminism and dating and chivalry mm -hmm. and how all of this can mix together in a way that empowers women and men. Yes. And this story is a perfect example of that because we want love we want to feel empowered but wait a second are we thinking about the men mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. do we want them to feel loved do we want them to feel empowered that's right and a great union is where both people feel empowered that's power love baby oh, yes right? that's All why right. it's called power love <laughs> and and here's the thing people love us more when they do things for us it is a psychological thing mm -hmm, as you well mm -hmm. know that you can increase affection from somebody simply by letting them do something for you and where this comes from is the caveman brain which is we work together as a team mm -hmm. and so when you allow someone to be a part of your team and to service you as it would be in caveman days where he goes and gets the bigger game and we go and get the smaller berries mm -hmm. and we bring them together and service each other with mm -hmm. that, right? And so when you can reintroduce service to each other in a relationship, when you can let people open doors, you know, I have so many good men going, is chivalry dead? Why am I being rejected? Why are my yeah. efforts to simply open a car It's hard door. for men right now. It is really yeah. hard for men who really want to be a genuine, gentleman. loving gentleman. Yes. You know, and one of the things I'm finding too is like one, they're either getting judged for, uh, judged for it for being maybe anti-feminist, like anti-woman, right. which is not at all. It's no, actually, a, the that. purpose is to honor women actually. Honor and uplift yeah. and serve. Or the other thing that I notice will happen is they'll be judged for being feminine actually, for being soft, for not mm. being hard enough. And this will happen, especially if, so anyone watching too, especially if you're attracted to the bad boy or you have, uh, you, you're attracted to those who treat you poorly. If you kind of notice that you keep dating people who treat you poorly, you may be right now turned off by people treating you amazingly. 
So that's, that's a disconnect, yes. right? If you, if you, <laughs> you're in trouble, if you're only attracted to people who, 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 who treat you poorly, uh, now that can change as, as you and I know, and that can definitely be shifted, but yeah, to, to tie it back in, I mean, that, and I love how you're, you're bringing this up, the, the gift that it is to allow someone to give to us. Mm -hmm. And I think any of us women, if we take a moment just to think about it, we know it's a gift because we love to give. It's in our nature to give, to take care of. In fact, if anything, we over-accommodate, right? Um, so, so, so we know we love to do, and we know it's a way we connect to others. And so, you know, what I find can be really useful if you're having, if you're like me and have a hard time receiving is remember how selfish it is to not let someone, to not invite someone to, to give, mm -hmm. right? Cause when we start thinking that way, go, Oh no, it's a gift. Then, okay. Then I can slow down and breathe and let you put the shoe on my foot. Cause now you feel like, you know, you feel like a real man, <laughs> yeah. you know, giving something and treating this beautiful woman the way, you know, the way she wants to be treated. Like that was a gift to him. Yeah. And totally a gift to me once I allowed it. <laughs> so what can like women who find themselves in this position of like this, this staunch notion that I shouldn't let anyone do anything for me because it disempowers me. Right. How can they switch that mindset? So what I would do is I would actually first focus on what is it that you actually want? So, you know, a lot of the times and I speak to women all the time and ask the question, if I could wave a magic wand, what do you actually want? And there's so many common threads and I'm always talking to empowered women, like 99.9% .9 of the time, these are women already strong, already powerful, but but deal with this very thing. Mm -hmm. But so when you ask yourself what you actually want, I'll bet you you'll be saying things like, I want a true partner. I want someone who's going to lift, lift me up and let me lift him up. Um, you know, I want someone who, this is also really common because empowered women are often used to doing it all. You know, like holding all, all the load on your shoulders and what don't actually want another relationship where you're carrying that person's load too. So often when I ask the question, wouldn't it be nice if you were with someone who was your rock? They're like, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, focus first on what it is that you actually want. Get clear about that and then be looking for people all around. It doesn't even have to be on dates. You can just start with your family, your friends, your colleagues, and start allowing the things you actually want and catch the reflexes, you know, yeah. like me, how I wanted to need, <laughs> nearly need them in the face, like catch it, breathe yeah, and be able to recognize, oh, that's consistent with what I want. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then allow it. And then you start to become more comfortable with the consistency of receiving what it is that you actually want. Now you called it a reflex. I'd want to call it emotional discomfort. Mm. And, and because I want people to recognize it, yes, right? Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like, you know, we have this, this mentality that's been put into us on a subconscious level, showing up in our conscious behaviors mm -hmm. that if someone does something for us, we are not strong. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things when I talk about the seven qualities that men look for in a woman, one of them is vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And, and, and what that is, is you can be you can do everything. Look, I don't deny that you can do everything. You can own that home. You can kill those mm -hmm. spiders. You can do it on your own. That barbecue's yours. It. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's are. true. And actually, I'm going to pause you for a sec because yeah. that I think that's a really important point to underline. We've all we already know we can do that. Yes. We can stop proving it. Yes, we, 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 <laughs> we can stop. Now there are now that this I don't want to you know, uh, I don't want to negate the fact that there are, there's still more work for us as women to do for sure. But when it comes to, uh, to being a strong, independent woman, that was something we took on as a, as a gender and we have totally rocked it. We have done it. We can do it. And, and we don't need to keep proving it over and over and over again. And what I, you know, the, uh, so in the world of mindset, the way I look at it is it's not about, you know, there's that line, you know, I don't need a man or I shouldn't need a man. Mm -hmm. And this is where 
you know, this proving ourselves that we can be strong and independent has gone just too far and now is, is biting us in the yeah. ass and stopping us from having what we want. Because this isn't anymore about needing a man. This is, okay, I can completely, and I'm like, I'm speaking for myself here. And I know Chantal, I mean, I know this woman. This is a powerful woman, okay? You know, this is not about needing anybody. This is about wanting it. Here's the thing, though. We don't need a man. But our men need to feel needed. Yes. And if they don't, then they say, what am I doing here? Yeah. Because again, the caveman brain says, I'm with, I'm with somebody to be part of a team. Mm -hmm. And it's more work for men to be with us mm -hmm. because it takes more of the three Ps, right? Protect, profess, and provide. Mm -hmm. If they're on their own, there's no three Ps. It's like, I just take care of me and that's it. Yeah. And that's easy. Yes. But when they take us on, they're mm -hmm. ready for more responsibility. Mm -hmm. And they take us on for that added responsibility because it gives them a sense of purpose. Yes. If you don't need them, if you don't let them kill the spider, they have no purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's when they start spinning and wondering, what am I doing in this relationship? That's when they start looking outside of it. Yeah. Because they're looking for that sense of fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And it's not happening because you don't need them for something. You don't give them a role. You don't say... Only you can do this for me. That's right. And in communication, I think a lot of the times we don't, as women, aren't realizing that the function, the male's function in communication is not what our function is. Like mm -hmm. we communicate to connect. And then we'll even sometimes get frustrated and think like, how come you're not connecting back? But he's communicating because he's trying to figure out, he's communicating for function. He's communicating yes. for purpose. Through behavior. Through, exactly. And so, you know, we can be, if you're sort of wondering like, what's he thinking and, and men don't analyze as we all know the way we do right. at all, so. not, even, you would right. not even be in this kind of conversation. Right. But you know, the one thing that I can say that men do stop and think about, even if it's just on a sub subconscious or automatic level is like, what, like, how do I fit in or why am I needed here? Right. Right. Yeah. It's almost like a, how can I help? But I don't yeah. know that that's actually the language, but sort of like, what's the problem? How do I solve it? It's, it's very functional. And we need, we thing, not just for the man ourselves too. If we loved honored, uh, you know, ha to have someone have our back, then we need, you need to fall back if you want someone to catch you. Yeah. Yeah, right. I love and that. that's challenging when I we're not that. used to it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love that. If yeah. there's anybody who tweets stuff out there, can you please tweet that? Say that again. You have to fall back if you want someone to catch you. A hundred percent. hundred percent. And the selection process is where it's at, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So tell us more about getting through those moments where you have, you know, that you, it's, it's, we see, we see what's familiar, even if it's wrong for us. So if we're used to rejecting people, you know, we're, that's what we're going to keep on doing and yes. to do the opposite is going to feel uncomfortable. And then also for women who have this, this mentality that if we let someone do something, it disempowers us. And so somebody is about to do something for them and they feel that emotional discomfort. What do they do? Okay. Well, first, I think it's important that we all acknowledge as women, our brains are so smart and they work so quickly that it's, I think what throws us off is we are, we're so hyper aware of what's happening and there's, it's, there's actually, it feels in the moment like there's a lot of time to, to push it away, but you can use that time to also, like I said, breathe, stop and make a, and make a conscious choice on whether is this consistent with what I want or is this not consistent? with what I want mm -hmm. and it really is and I know you you know you advocate meditation quite a bit and that is such a beautiful practice because if you are in a practice of slowing down then in those moments it's a lot easier to take a breath to slow down um does that answer your question or is there a piece that I missed there there's a couple pieces it, it to your does. question um so if I can add to that yeah um you know it's it's is choosing your behaviors regardless of your emotions. Mm -hmm. And that's, 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 right. that's a big yeah. key to change, right? It's, it's like you say, asking yourself, what do I want? Mm -hmm. Does this jive with what I want? I want a man who takes good care of me. I want a man who cares mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. who cares about me, who sees a need, even if I don't need it, Yes. who just sees something that he can do for me and does it. 
This is so great too. And actually recognizing the intent behind the other person rather mm. than the, um, the, like the emotion, what did you call it? The emotional discomfort yes. that's showing up for you. Yeah. So even, even today, even in my relationship with Tommy, Tommy does all of these things for me, bless him. I mean, and it's the way he shows me love. Yes. Now there are things I can totally do on my own. I go on, away on a, on a trip. I come back, he has uh, changed the oil on my car. He has you made sure that there's gas in it. He's like clean. He's like done all of these things. I didn't ask him to do it. I didn't need him to do it. But, oh, what a beautiful, like how, what a shame it would be if I was like, if I responded saying, why would you do that? I could have done it myself, yeah. you know? But for someone, in yeah. that's, that's and, the instinct. And for me, and but I want yeah. to, that's what I want to get. For me, it yeah. really would be too. So so what I do, and I like to bring it, so what do I do in so this the moment? So the change in behavior, that's that right. lines up with what you actually want. With, exactly. Instead of to your emotions, that changes. That, cha that changes my action. So being able to, being able to identify the difference between how I'm feeling and what I actually want so that I can change my behavior and looking at, and one way that helps us do that too, is looking at what the other person's intention is. And, you know, you can bring in the five love languages for, for that's something that's really common for people. But that is just because it's not necessarily my love language doesn't mean I can't receive the love. Mm -hmm. Right. So being able to recognize this is the way someone is giving me love right now and allowing yourself to consciously, and I say consciously because you need to be awake in it, right? And that's different than those feelings that, you know, that, sh that show up automatically. So being able to consciously bring, bring your, be awake to the fact that someone is giving you love and thinking about that other person too. Here's this person doing this act of service you know, what would be a really loving way to respond, <laughs> right? Like saying, thank you, acknowledging the person, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And it, and it does take, and I won't lie, it takes practice. It's, it's out, it, it is outside of the comfort zone for sure. And it is your access to transforming your love life and your whole life. So what do you feel like if, if women started getting into that shift. Yeah. What do you feel would happen next for them? So if they so just say that question so in a slightly different way. Women, so th there's, there's a woman who's going to be watching this. Yes. And she defined empowerment as rejection. Yes. Um, she watches this. She goes, okay, you know what? Maybe that rejection is actually pushing away what I want. Yes. So I'm not going to change my behaviors. I'm going to let the person open the door and I'm going to say, thank you. Yes. Despite what I want, I despite the screaming <laughs> voice in my head that yes. wants to say, I've I got can, this. I can do this on my what? own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's going to start happening is you're, is, I mean, it's just, it's, and it's going to happen quickly is you're going to actually re first of all, recognize how much love is all around you. Oh, you're nice. so, and this is where you, it's like your eyeballs change going from scarcity of love to abundance of love. And so that's for one, you're going to notice and you're going to see the evidence for how freaking lovable you actually are, how many people are around wanting mm -hmm. to give you love. And then secondly, now you've become a safe place for people to love. And that, you know, has to go mentioned because it's, it's scary to love. It's vulnerable to love. Love is the most vulnerable thing of all. And, and if you can be a safe place for people to give love, again, whether it's romantically or in family or in friendships or anywhere, right? If you can be someone who is a safe place to give love, then you will start attracting more and more of the kind of love that you want. So that's what I would say. About I, that. Love, I love that you said a safe place because from a man's perspective, um, you know, it's, I mean, they're starting to question whether they should still be chivalrous I know. because of the amount of rejection that's going on. Yeah. Um, and so what that means for them is for me to be good to someone doesn't feel good because mm -hmm. it becomes a place where I get attacked. And it's so important to create that safe place and open yourself up to creating an emotional safe space for men to be who they are mm -hmm. and who they are is kind, is generous is sensitive, mm -hmm. is emotional. And it's vulnerable for them to be all of those things. Yes. And it's actually in particular masculine as well. So it's vulnerable for them to, to, 
to be kind because if you're rejected after being kind, like, oh, like a dagger. But it's also, you know, I did this amazing, um, Tommy and I both did together, this amazing Tantra weekend, uh, Tantric transformational course. Do you want to talk about where you took it? Yeah, so you can look her up. Lucy Becker is uh, is her name. I did it just north of the city here in, it's uh, north of Toronto. Um, but people from all over come. It's amazing. Lucy Becker, look her up. Um, but anyhow, so we had done uh, this amazing weekend and there's parts that you can do it as single. You can do it as couples, right? Tommy had done it as a single man previously, which I think is a big part of how he actually like already had so much confidence in being despite how awkward I probably <laughs> was. Um, bless him. But, um, um, but anyway, when we were doing it together, there's parts where, you know, the women do particular work on embracing our femininity and the men are doing particular work focusing on their, on, on unleashing their masculinity. And we don't get to be a part of each other's rituals and discovery. That's very separate and it's very private and it should be. And you're actually not even allowed to talk too much about it with each other, which is pretty cool. But, um, but you can see, and then we come back together afterwards. And one of the things that, that Lucy had taught us, and I thought it was so amazing, she said, don't you dare squash their masculinity. They just, I mean, just unraveled so much of themselves to let themselves be raw and real. And as women were so powerful, one look, one little mm, squashes all of that. So I think it's really important to honor the mat, just as it's important for us to honor and you know the the vulnerable act it is for us to allow ourselves to be feminine, to honor the masculine as well, and to respect it for the courage it takes to to express that. I agree one hundred percent. Um, is there anything else we should touch on? Yeah, I think we touched on it a little bit on the beginning, but something I think that's really important to circle back to and underline is that just the very act of looking for love is easy f for us to squash with each other. So, you know, to watch as women where, you know, that, that we're not judging other women, for instance, for for looking for love. Don't feel sorry for someone looking for love because we don't feel sorry for someone looking to take on their entrepreneurship. We don't feel sorry for someone looking to uh, take on their health and we should never feel sorry for someone wanting to take on their love life and to have it be a match for who they are. So we need to really shift and change our conversation about that with ourselves and with each other, because this is something that's like so amazing. The kinds of relationships that are starting to be developed now, having an empowered woman with an empowered man committed to empowering each other while being solid individuals. I mean, come on, it doesn't get better than that, but we need to make room for that. We need to have conversations that are conducive to that instead of, you know, doing our little squash, squash, squashing. Mm. And then you go from power woman to power love to power couple. Totally. And that's, <laughs> it's so great. So I'm literally in the process of creating a program called power couple. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so good. It. Yeah. I love it. And Michelle is writing a book too. That's by right. The way. Yeah. Power yes. Love. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all, you know, all of the work that I do is, you know, there can there's specific intentions. Like my big focus, you know, for the last while has been supporting women in in shifting the the quality of people that they're attracting so that they can have the kind of love that they really want, right? But no matter whether it's looking for love or being in love, maintaining the relationship or just self-love, ultimately, I mean, it really has to do with our relationship with ourselves, our conversations with ourselves, our alignment with what's important to us, and that who we are, that we're not only being true to that, but also that we're seen for our truth, mm -hmm. right? Because if people are misinterpreting us the whole time, then that's tricky too. So, yeah. so actually, you know, looking at it from both angles. So, oh, I just love this, yes. this topic. So <laughs> I know well, that's why you work on it Yeah, because it lights you up. And when it lights you up, it doesn't feel like work. No, not at all. Where can people find you? The best place to go is michellebaxo.com. Uh, now I invite you actually uh, to, to do what my free work so if you go to michellebaxo.com slash power love workshop, 
then there's a, a great a great free workshop. Bring your journal or a piece of paper with you. You're going to get to work right away. And uh, that that would be the best place to start. If you know you want to work with me, then um, then you can you know then you can just reach out, find me on Facebook, and I'll tell you how to tell you how to reach me. But I think it would be really good for everybody to start actually doing some of this work and get some more clarity about what it is that you actually want. That's one of the exercises that you do. This is a great place for people to to mm -hmm. start. But you can find me at michellebaxo.com or anywhere on on social media. I love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Yeah, so glad you came here mm -hmm. today. Yeah, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you guys for Thank watching. You. Thank you for listening. And there is so much more to come. If you want to come find myself, of course, Chantal High, Canada's datingcoach.com. And as some of you know, I am on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I have a Pinterest page now. Oh, wow. It is fabulous. <laughs> Great. So we will see you in the ether. Thank you guys. And we love you, both of us, very much.